Hi, Renee here. I am here today to show you how to put together the Grateful For You card making workshop your way. In the kit, you get enough supplies to make 12 cards, six of each two different designs. You get all of your card bases, you get your envelopes, you get this wonderful stamp set that's just for this kit. You can't buy it separately. Um, I used every single one of the stamps on these cards except for that little tiny one and the pattern actually did show it being used but I just didn't use it. So it's a great little stamp. I can see using it for a lot of different things later. The, I already did all of my stamping. Um, it also comes with this embellishing thread which I had never used this thread before. Um, so we're going to give it a try, see how it goes. And um, I do have some floss. These are the scissors I use for cross-stitching floss. So I'm going to use that on this thread. And then these are the colors that I use for all my stamping. Um, Sapphire, New England Ivy, Peach, and Charcoal. These are our new stamp pads. These are the old ones, but the colors are the same and they, they last forever. I'm not going to buy new stamp pads just because there's a new, new design, which I love the new design, but... And then you'll probably need some glue dots. They're not absolutely necessary, but they will add a little bit of a dimension to your cards. And you can also use um, foam tape. I'm gonna leave the foam tape off this time. And um, you might need a little bit of tape. Sometimes when I'm using um, any kind of a, a ribbon or a floss or a thread that's wrapped behind, um, I sometimes like to put a couple pieces of tape on there to hold it steady. So we'll see if we need this. I've got it, I've got it ready to go if we do. And then I've got my tape gun, a little bit of liquid glue, I have my reverse tweezers in case I need them, and then my bone folder to put some good creases in my cards. So the first one we're going to do, and I'm just going to go ahead and talk through these. I've already cut all my papers, I've already done all my stamping. So the first one we're going to do is thank goodness for a friend like you. And this one had kind of a neat um, technique down here that's called repeat stamping to create a border. This was the stamp um, that was used, and so you can see it's just one small square. Well, what I did was I repeat stamped that along the bottom, and let me get my pieces and I'll show you what I mean. And I'll leave a little space, and right up here I'll put a quick little, uh, just a clip of me doing the reverse, or reverse, repeat stamping. So. This is what we have. You stamp right on your on your card base, so it is going to be a flatter card, which is nice for mailing. And I don't know about you, but I always need thank you cards. So we're just going to go ahead and start with our first strip. And this was all really simple cutting. It didn't take much time at all to do all the cutting. So you just go ahead and line it up. And if for some reason your cutting wasn't exact, you can always flip it over and trim it this time around. I don't know. It was it worked out well for me. I think I'm going to use the darker color. Our cardstock has two different tones of the same color. I think I'm going to use the darker on this one. And I'll go ahead and get this on. This is appearing to be a pretty quick card. I'm just going to make one of each, um, but it, the the kit does make six of each each card, so you get 12 cards total. Get all the card bases, like I said, and the envelopes, so that's a really good deal. And I love these card, card bases, they're really thick. So we will go ahead and put this little banner on. I really like this stamp that it came with, really nice. And then this one, I just stamped it and then I hand cut it, but it was really easy because it's all just straight cuts. There was no curving to, to be done, um, nothing like that. So it was really easy. I was gonna grab a grab a video clip for you of cutting those, but it was so simple. I was like, oh, this is kind of silly. There's no reason to make a video of cutting this out with straight cuts. I think everybody knows how to make straight cuts. <clears throat> So there's that. Okay, now on to the difficult part. <clears throat> well, maybe not difficult for everybody, but we'll see how it goes for me. So we've got this embellishing thread. This is the gold. We also have silver. And we're going to find our end. Sometimes finding your end is the worst part. There's an end that's sticking out, so we'll, we'll call that our end. And on the instructions, it says to cut two nine inch pieces of the thread. Now it looks like this is, okay, it looks like this thread has several threads in it, but we're going to cut two 9-inch pieces. Make sure you use the right 
scissors, if you try to use your scissors that you use for paper on any kind of ribbon or thread, more times than not, it will just end up fraying everything and not actually cutting it. Um, paper's really hard on scissors. Okay, so it wants me to tie a bow. So this is going to be um, a pretty exciting on, you know, right on <clears throat> live, not live, but you know, I'm not gonna edit much of this out if I don't have to. So tell you what, let's tie a knot first about halfway through, halfway through. That way we have our center. And then it says to tie a bow. And this is a little more difficult because you've got four pieces coming together. So let's do that. Well, I think it may have turned out halfway decent. And I think next time I would not put that knot in there. I think I would just tie it because you have more than enough to trim off to make it look nice after you're done. So let's go ahead and trim off all of these extras. Wow, this stuff cuts easy. And leave ourselves a mess right here. And then it says to put it on with a glue dot. But you know what? I think I'm not gonna do that because when you use glue dots, if there's not something covering the entire glue dot, it stays sticky and then it'll get stuck inside your envelope. So I'm gonna use, this is just some Scotch quick dry glue that I put in a little a little container here that has a, um, a fine tip, which every fine tip, I don't care which ones you get, they, they get clogged. So just keep yourself a, just a pin and I just keep mine in my drawer here and I just keep using it and that'll usually open it up for you. And the reason I like the Scotch quick dry to do this is because when it dries it's matte so it won't you won't be able to tell that there's glue that's splooshed out so we'll go ahead stick that on there push it down and then we're gonna let that sit it doesn't take long to dry so I'm gonna set this aside and work on the other cards so we're gonna gently put this aside and let it dry okay now for the second card, it's called Your Appreciated Thank You. And this one had another technique, but it was so easy. I was gonna, like I said, I was gonna video it, but it was just too easy, it felt silly. Just stamp these. Um, I stamped two of these stems right here, one just one side by side. And then the flowers are just these flowers. I put three on first, stamped it, took that center one off, moved over and stamped the other two. Really, really easy. Um, you can use blocks. Um, this is, let me grab it. This is what I use. It's just an old stamp, Fisker stamp press. It's, yeah, it's pretty old. It's got a crack in it. I should probably get a new one one of these days. I keep hoping that we will come out with something like this uh, close to my heart. Um, so I've been holding off. Um, I think this thing is great. So that's what I used. But you can use um, you can use blocks if that's what you have. And truthfully, if all you have is a phone, um, you can put your stamps on your phone and use your phone as a stamp pad. I've seen people do or stamp block um, when people have forgotten their stamp blocks. So, okay, so we're gonna do this one. Looks like we build it on this bottom base, and then we're gonna tie the ribbon or tie the embellishing thread around it and tie another bow. Uh oh, another bow. So. We'll see how this goes. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. So here's all the pieces. We won't need our card base immediately, so we'll set that aside. This is our back. So one side is this really pretty flower, which we did use on the last card, and then the other side has these neat arrows. Um, so we're gonna use the arrows this time. So let's go ahead and put this down first. And I'm almost afraid to mention that my uh, Glue, my glue gun is not squeaking. Seems like it would, I would be, um, oh, asking for trouble if I said it was not squeaking. So I just did it. So we'll see if it starts squeaking now that I did that. Okay, so we'll got that. Then we'll go ahead and do this one. Again, I'm gonna use the dark side. I like that dark, I like that contrast between the pink and the green. Look at that, it started squeaking. Should have known. See, I should have just been quiet not said anything and we will center that with about it's about an eighth of an inch all the way around 
You don't have to worry about measurements with the kit because the kit gives you all the measurements and it even tells you what to cut on which pages. Now you'll see I got some ink on this. So I'll bring that up a little closer and see if I can get it to focus. Let's see, it's trying to focus, there we go. You can see that there's some ink on here, but it's really not gonna matter because this is going to cover it, okay? But we're not gonna put this on until the very end because you look at your pattern and you work from the back up. So it looks like our next items are gonna be these two strips, okay? So it gives you some measurements up here so you know how far to put things in. So this is saying that you need to put, um, let's see, that was a quarter inch, that looks good. And then when we put this one on the top, it'll be a half an inch down and a half an inch from the side. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna eyeball these two. So let's put a little bit of adhesive on the blue one. And it's created in such a way that um, you cut it off after you put it down. So let's go ahead and just line this up with our board here so we can see. So when we put this down, it's gonna be a half an inch down and a half an inch in. So it's gonna be about right there, okay? So we know that we wanna have this right about here. So, whoops, go ahead and get that out of the way. And then we can go ahead and lay this down. I may have laid that down in the wrong place. Let's pull that back up. It wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a good video if I didn't make a mistake. So let's go ahead and try this again. Let's put it down as far as we can and still have our edges so that we have a good, a good edge there. And then we're gonna put this down. Now this does have a one-way design, so I would look to see, you know, which one way you want it to go. I want my flowers to go that direction. So do keep an eye on that if you have some one-way designs going on. So we'll put that on. And then we'll come in here and make sure you use your paper scissors, not your floss scissors because you will ruin your floss scissors or your, your ribbon scissors if you use it on paper. Also, do not use any scissors that you want to use on fabric ever on this stuff because the paper will eat it right away. Okay, so there's that. So before we put this on, we want to wrap our ribbon around, or I mean our, our thread, our embellishing thread. So I think what I'll do is start it off with a piece of tape and it looks like we're about right there, just eyeballing it. This is all handmade, doesn't have to be perfect. I've said that a million gazillion times. So we will grab two strands and then we'll tape this one down. There we go. And make sure you trim that. I'm really liking this embellishing thread. It's really nice. It's real thin, so it'll make it extremely easy for um, for mailing. So again, it wants you to cut it into nine-inch strips. I do kind of like when it tells you how long you need something so you can, you know, cut things. And it wants a double one again, which probably just gives it more body so that you can see it better. So we will cut two nine-inch strips. There we go. And this time, I'll tell you what we're gonna do first. We're gonna put this down first and then we're gonna tie our bow so that we make sure our bow is not underneath this. Now you can put this on with foam tape. Um, however, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it flat down. I'm gonna be donating the majority of these to a charity and they like items to be as flat as possible for mailing so that they don't have to pay extra postage. So, so this, um, embellishing thread is, I don't want to cover up my flowers that I, I stamped, so we'll do it that way. This is turning out really pretty. Okay, so um, if you were to use the um, foam tape, you would just put a good, you know, a good amount of the foam tape um, so that it doesn't what's the word I'm looking for, collapse, and you don't have parts of it looking like there's potholes. 
that would not be good. Okay, so I just tied a, tied a knot. And um, my husband taught me this. Isn't that funny? I had to learn how to tie my shoes as an adult. Um, if you tie your bow and it goes flippy like this, untie it, tie it the other direction. In other words, do your loop the other direction. So I'm gonna do the loop. And usually you want to do your loop the opposite way that you did your knot. So I'm going to go over and let's see how this turns out. And I think I may have got it right the first time around. Let's just pull our ends down to make our bow a little prettier. Now when you've got this many pieces going on, you've got to pull them all at the same time. So that's the only tricky thing. So if you find this a little too fiddly, um, try doing it with just a single, a single um, ribbon rather than having two pieces going on. You might find it easier to to do often to be functional. So we will trim off these little guys. Trim off these little guys. There we go. And you might want to put a little touch of glue underneath there just to hold it. Um, I'm not going to do that this time, just for our purposes. Here's our card base. I'm going to just fold it. These are already come pre scored, so it's awesome. And then we will go ahead and let's put a little bit extra. Let's put some score tape. This is, um, in, it's been called Be Creative Tape. You can use red liner tape, um, any other kind of double sided, double sided tape. I really like this one. I get it off Amazon. And truthfully, when you get this stuff, no matter who you buy it from, it's bizarre because it all says Sukwang. So it's all gotta be by the same, it's all gonna be the same stuff. So, so don't overpay, is what I'm saying here. Let's get the backing off. There we go. That'll keep that tape really, I'm sorry, the embellishing thread really secure underneath the card front. Oh, there goes the squeak. Yep, kiss of death I gave myself. That's what I did. Okay, make sure you got your card opening in the right direction. Um, I've been known to put these on incorrectly. I have to rip them off and start over again. Okay, and we'll push that down so that that all stays where we have it, where we want it. Let's adjust this a little bit because I think that one is just a little bit too short. There we go. So it looks the same. Now that turned out very nice. I really like that one. And then let's see how our other one went. Yep, it's on there. It's not going anywhere. Let's go ahead and fold it. And there you go. So this, this is the Grateful For You Workshop Your Way. Makes 12 cards, six of each of these two designs. I hope you enjoyed it and um, please subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Hope you have a great day. Bye.